What's up, everybody? T from Simpler Trading. This is the Friday night recap video. So uh, these are the weeks you live for as a trader. You hold your positions, you find those good looking setups, and then the market finally cooperates. So good push in the market this week. Obviously, the Qs, nice and strong. So the Amazons and Googles, those were good to us. And then the S&P 500, strong all the way into the close today. So we'll take a look at a couple of trades we closed on Amazon and Google, take a look at a couple different setups I'm focusing on. And then a discussion on um, you know two different perspectives here. The market could certainly just keep on grinding higher, uh, which I actually think is going to be the outcome. But there is a growing probability that with things being so extended, you could see a little bit of a pullback. So a couple different things to discuss. Let's get jumping on in. Okay, so for those of you in the simpler options room, we were taking a look at this earlier, uh, and it was nice to see a lot of you take advantage of some of the same trades, but for the put credit spreads on Google and Amazon, finally able to cash out this week. So between all those different credit spreads, just about $20,000 a profit, which uh, is obviously awesome, awesome stuff. I think more importantly, though, is we can rinse and repeat these same kinds of um, you know, you find the same setup and it really is the timing of the overall market. So the squeeze on Google worked so well and Amazon finally got a flame up under its ass because the market got going. So keep in mind, a big part of swing trading and swing trading consistently is finding those good looking squeezes in the Googles, etc. But you want timing uh, behind you with the market as well. So typically you want to be your most aggressive and you're going to get the highest probability swing trades when the market itself, at the same time you're taking the entry in the individual stock, is setting up near the 21, getting ready for its own solid push. So pretty much that was the case with both trades here. So for Google, you had the beautiful daily squeeze, stacked moving averages, a bunch of green 10x bars. So we were selling the April 16th expiration credit spreads inside the squeeze. This did take a little, uh, a little while to get going here, but once the queues finally got moving, Google was off to the races. So it was an easy one to hold. We never even touched a one ATR to the downside. So a little bit of back and forth chop, but the patience was rewarded. So good looking move from Google and Amazon. Uh, so a couple of those credit spreads on Amazon we've been holding since early February. Back in this squeeze, we obviously sat through uh, quite the drawdown, but we continue to hold on and we'll talk about why we held on here. It comes down to the structure of the queues on that weekly chart. But Amazon finally gets it moving here this week with the queues. We did add a little bit of exposure. Awesome, awesome move. So, you know, the reason I didn't throw in the towel on Amazon technology as a whole, the reason I'm still taking, you know, stabs at things like that Google squeeze is though we did have a little bit of short term uh, you know, weakness here in technology, we've been covering in a lot of these videos, this weekly chart and the weekly chart has given us a much different perspective. A couple of weeks of downside, but you still have your stack moving averages. You're still in a solid uptrend. You hold right at the weekly 21. You find some good support there. You go into a weekly squeeze and then you go into a daily squeeze. So a couple of weeks of downside, none of which really did anything to end the uh, bigger picture bull market here in the overall trend for the tech stocks. So a little bit of downside, but for those who have been patient, focusing on that bigger picture structure certainly rewarded us here today. So major thing to keep in mind, um, you know, two different perspectives here. From one perspective, things are super, super extended. So if you look at the Qs, we're at that two plus ATR. If you look at the SPY, who did nothing all day until the final uh, 15 minutes, it feels like. Your two plus ATR over there, Google, same thing. Amazon, same thing. So um, there's been so many moves across the board here. And we've reached that moment in time where you're hitting that extension. So there is the growing probability that sometime soon, you could see a bit of a reversion back towards the 21. So while I think that's definitely possible, another thing to take into consideration is that as the indexes are firing these weekly squeezes, or, or rather as the indexes are firing these daily squeezes, they're just starting to trigger a couple of weekly squeezes. So for the S&P 500, weekly squeeze firing along this week and is a bit of a reference here, you can continue to really grind once a weekly squeeze fires long. So we are extended on the daily, Maybe you get a little bit of a dip, but I do think for the rest of the month here with these weekly squeezes, we should continue to see some upside. So back to the cues in the weekly squeeze we just discussed here, this hasn't even technically fired yet. So while the daily chart does point towards the potential for a little bit of a dip, the weekly chart here hasn't even gotten going yet. And Amazon is very much the same thing. So the daily chart, it's not going to be my perfect, my favorite entry because we're so extended, but the setup on Amazon I've really been loving this year is the weekly squeeze. 
So don't get me wrong, all day in the options room, I'm looking at Amazon, I'm looking at Google, I'm looking at the queues, and it's just like, are we really going to keep getting long here? We're at that extension, this thing has made a killer move, and while I do know we could pull back, man, do I want to be positioned here for these weekly squeezes. So we'll see if I, uh, you know, this kind of comes back to haunt me here, but I did add a little bit of exposure in Amazon at the end of the day. You know, maybe this is some FOMO. Uh, we're extended on the daily. The weekly looks killer. So we'll see how this trade goes. Uh, being objective, this ain't the perfect entry. As good as the weekly squeeze looks, you are extended on the daily chart. So quite frankly, uh, for myself and for those who are potentially continuing to add here, you're adding into a stock that's already made a killer move, and you're really banking on the continuation uh, of that killer move. So I do think potentially with Amazon and with the queues in that weekly squeeze, with earnings coming up and with next week being the monthly expiration, you could potentially see things get even more extended. So for the cues here, what I'm going to kind of keep an eye on is that big psychological number at 14,000. It'll be a brand new all-time high, uh, and it's only about 1% and change above the current price. So it's not going to take us too much to get there. And then for Amazon, let's see with that daily squeeze, uh, two bars in the firing here. And with the weekly squeeze looking like it's going to do the very same, let's see if we can't go up here and test those all-time highs before earnings. So I certainly think that's possible. I do think at the same time, just based on probabilities, the market could come in here and kind of catch everyone with their pants down and start to wipe the floor clean with us with a pullback to the 21. So that wouldn't be preferable. Preferable. Uh, but what did I add here for Amazon? April 23rd expiration. So again, looking for this puppy to continue into earnings. Sold puts at 33.30. And then I sold another credit spread with short strikes at 33.05. So uh, in these videos, I always aim to be honest with you. You know, we share the PL every now and then. We talk about the setups, what works, what doesn't. But I always want to be objective. So it's going to be interesting to see what next week brings. But at the very least, I'm um, kind of, you know, understanding of the fact that these could really go either way. So I love the weekly squeeze. This has been the focus on Amazon all year. I think it's finally getting ready to go here. But if you look at the last couple of times you got rejected at that, uh, you know, that top Bollinger Band, you line it up with the daily chart, you were hitting that extension. So it'll be interesting. But all in all, you got to love these weeks as a trader, uh, especially with the Amazons. We sat through a whole bunch of shit there. Uh, with Google, that was pretty painless. But awesome stuff here. So we'll see what next week brings. Give you a uh, a couple more names that we're in right now. So for APPS, good looking squeeze, stack moving averages, bullish histogram, holding right above the 21. So we got some April 30th expiration credit spreads over there for Roku. Same thing, April 30th expiration put credit spreads, smaller positions, uh, position sizes on APPS and on Roku and on Tesla here where we also got a couple of put credit spreads, smaller positions in each of those three trades for a couple different reasons. Uh, you know, based on my pre-flight checklist, they're not picture perfect setups. And then you gotta take into consideration the fact the market is extended. I mean, as easily as you might see it go higher, you could see it pulled back. And really number one goal right now, for me at least for the month of January, uh, the month of January, where the hell am I at? I'm ready for bed. Uh, number one goal for the rest of April, is protecting these gains over here. And with the APPS, the Tesla, and the Roku, there's a good chunk of change weight in there. So number one goal, protect the profits. And that's the name of the game as a swing trader. The easy money is going to be made finding those good-looking squeezes, taking your entries near the 21. And if the market is doing the same thing, you really got a great opportunity there to take the bulk of your profits into strength. So does the market continue to grind higher next week? Do we, believe it or not, pull back? We shall see, but I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you watching as always. Hope you had a good week.